related information coming out of New York City um, that to me just, just demonstrates the idiocy and incompetence of the Adams administration. Uh, right now, um, the mayor of New York City, he's decided to sue. This is brilliant, y'all. I, I would have never thought of this one. He has decided to sue the charter bus companies for transporting the illegal immigrants into New York City from Texas. Um, so take a listen to this clip. After charter bus companies that are driving migrants into New York City. Such a big problem. Now this newly filed lawsuit, the city is seeking hundreds of millions of dollars from at least 17 bus companies. We want to go now to Lizette Nunez, who's been taking a look at this lawsuit with what we should know. Good morning, Lizette. Good morning, Dan and Tashani. Well, the Adams administration is accusing the bus companies of carrying out Texas Governor Abbott's plan and moving migrants across the country. So far to date, the city has spent more than $3 billion on the migrant crisis, and Mayor Adams believes the company should foot part of that bill. Our administration filed a lawsuit against 17 companies that have taken part in Texas Governor Greg Abbott's scheme to transport tens of thousands of migrants to New York City. The Adams administration taking legal action against the companies that have been dropping off migrants in the Big Apple since spring of 2022. The city is seeking $708 million in damages that have gone towards housing and feeding asylum seekers. Governor Abbott's Continuing use of migrants as political pawns is not only chaotic and inhumane, but makes clear he puts politics over people. The 14-page lawsuit accuses the bus companies of violating New York social services law by acting in bad faith and moving individuals who are in need of care while profiting from the crisis. Governor Abbott says migrants that have been flown or bused to New York City did so voluntarily, writing in part, this lawsuit is baseless and deserves to be sanctioned. It's clear that Mayor Adams knows nothing about the Commerce Clause of the U.S. Constitution or about the constitutional right to travel that has been recognized by the U.S. Supreme Court. This comes as just last week, Adams issued an executive order that sets limits on migrant arrivals, including requiring bus companies to issue a 32-hour notice before dropping off migrants in New York City. The executive order has largely been ignored. Bus companies instead have been dropping off migrants in New Jersey. New Jersey State Police have reportedly been guiding migrants onto trains to the city. Governor Murphy was asked why they were being directed to New York City. New York City is where the federal resources are located and directed for these uh, migrants, and that is a fact. Governor Kathy Hochul says she supports New York City taking action against bus companies. She's also planning a trip to D.C. to speak with the White House about the impact of the migrant crisis. Hochul says she's also in touch with Governor Phil Murphy and is encouraging neighboring counties to pass similar executive orders like New York City did that places limits on migrant arrivals. Dana Tashani. Lizette, thank you so much. All right, y'all. Well, first, <clears throat> we first need to set a few things straight. First, let's be clear. You guys, this is not a migrant crisis. It's, no. You need to be aware of the fact of how words and language is used to kind of reshape and reorient your thinking. This is not a migrant crisis. You guys, this is an invasion of individuals who have entered into this country illegally, bypassing our immigration laws under the guise of seeking asylum. That's what this is. We can't have a meaningful conversation or move this conversation forward until we just deal in some truth, something that so many of our politicians do not want to engage in, right? These individuals are not coming here from just South America, right? They're using our Southern border to cross over. But these people, they are coming from everywhere. Africa, Asia, India, they're coming from everywhere. So you mean to tell me that every other nation, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, all these asylum, people are seeking asylum by, by the millions? Is, is, is that what we're supposed to believe? 
all these people from all these countries, just all of this government persecution and fear for their lives. I'm not saying it's not happening, but all these people, that's what we're supposed to believe. Or, or is this a failure of our federal administration, namely Joe Biden specifically, to close and secure the border? What's so funny to me <laughs> is that Mayor Adams, with the support of the governor, of course she's going to support this, right? Is doing what I call the typical, you know, the smoke and mirrors move, right? They want to blame Texas Governor uh, Greg Abbott as if he's just telling the illegals, y'all now, y'all come on over and cross the border. And uh, when you get here, I'll place you on a bus to New York City. That is not what's happening. We don't want all these people illegally crossing the border, but it's happening because the border is not secure. Our southern border states, they have been dealing with illegal border crossings for years. For years. It's not new. And what was we were starting to make headway in this area and see some relief under the last administration with the building of that big beautiful wall. Yes, it was big and it was beautiful. And it was necessary. But as soon as Master Joe got into the office, he halts construction on the border wall and literally prevented ICE agents from doing their job. So, of course, Kathy Holcomb is going to support this. And I found it funny because the state isn't helping Mayor Adams because she's like, well, what you want me to do? I don't got no money for you for this. And the government, federal government, Joe Biden is like, I'm sorry, Eric, who? Who? No, 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 no comprendo. Like, he don't understand. He's not taking that man's calls, right? People are literally just pouring into the border. And instead of Mayor Adams, just, you know, I, it pains me when I see a man just don't have a spine. Instead of him just having a spine, humbling himself, forget the fact that he got to stay on cold with his party and just acknowledge that sanctuary cities are not in the best interest of the residents of his city. This rocket scientist decides to sue the bus companies. Yes, he's like, that's it. The bus companies are at fault for transporting the illegal migrants from Texas to New York City. So let's just sue them. Right. Like, so since New York City has effectively they have run out of money for writing a check that their hypocritical mouths can't cash. This is an attempt to generate some revenue so that they can pay and to pay for the migrants and take care of them that they keep receiving. So let's examine this. Your city on its own recognizance declared itself. A sanctuary city. Yes, I know, Eric, it happened before you got there, but you're the mayor now. You're the mayor now. You could have done something different. But instead, you stood on your high horse touting how compassionate and how welcoming your city is. You and Brandon Johnson up in Chicago, right? Then when the governor of Texas is like, okay, then, well, uh, we full down here and we can't handle any more of this. Here you go. Here's some illegals for you. You decide to sue the bus companies that have been paid a fee to transport the illegals. Like this is called commerce, right? It's capitalism at its finest. This man has got to be the least smart. I was going to say dumb, but the least smartest mayor in, mayor in New York City's history. Sir, it is not a crime to pay a bus company to put people on a bus to where they want to voluntarily go. Now, mind you, these people are technically, in a technical sense, they're technically criminals because they're not abiding by our immigration laws and the federal government refuses to enforce the law and treat these individuals as criminals. So therefore, what Governor Abbott is doing is called solving a problem that his state has had to deal with because he's like, I'm running out of options. And since there are other cities in this great these here United States that say we welcome 
illegals. We don't, we don't deport. We don't ask no questions. You can find sanctuary here. They're just not used to someone calling their bluff. That's what this is really all about. The expectation in Mayor Adams' pea-sized brain is to hopefully get a judgment against these companies and then take that money to keep this Ponzi scheme going. But I pray it doesn't work. Like, I'm interested to see how this will play out because in the meantime, guess what's happening? They are making cuts from New York City's budget, cutting and reducing critical services for the citizens and residents of New York City who actually pay taxes to pay and take care of the illegals. That's, that's what's happening. So in the clip you heard, you know, Mayor Holcomb is like, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go to DC and, um, you know, see if I can talk to the president and the same thing going to happen is when he went to talk to the president. Joe going to be like, listen, sis, um, I don't even know why you're here. Okay. I'm, it, I'm not giving y'all no money. Okay. Now I could see if they were going to be like, listen, Joe. I get it. It's an election year, but this is killing us. Close the border. But they're not going to say that because see what happens is this administration likes to weaponize their power against their opposition. So if Kathy goes as a Democrat and appeals to Joe, like, listen, I know it's an election year and you probably don't even know what I'm saying, Joe. You probably are just waiting for your next ice cream cone, but I need you to listen to me. I need you to secure the border because this is killing us. She not going to say that. All they know how to do is just ask for some money. If they turned the spigot off, they'd have a little bit of relief, but they can't do that. And I'm going to tell y'all why. And I already know I'm going to say something that's probably going to piss a lot of people off, but it can't piss you off anymore than you're already pissed off due to the suffering that you're experiencing at the hands of your own elected officials. So here it goes, okay? If you vote, if you vote for a Democrat in this next election, or if you vote for a Republican that hasn't made it clear that we need to close the border, but rather they take a different position such as, well, yes, um, let's just keep it open and continue to take care of these people because it's a humanitarian crisis. I'm convinced that you love dysfunction. You enjoy being broke. You love crime. And you love having people take you, take your money, take advantage of you, and pee on you while telling you it's just a little rain. Yes, I said it. It, it needed to be said because what else am I supposed to believe at this point? The U S military could have easily secured our border and enforced the laws that we already have, but they won't. The commander in chief has to do that. They simply won't close the border and Biden, you guys literally just recently decided to resume construction on the wall when he should have never stopped it in the first place. Y'all take a listen to this. All right, All right welcome, welcome back, back here, here to, to Live, live now, now from, from Fox. Fox. I'm, I'm John, John Maluka. Maluka. Thanks for joining us as we come back here at 742 now on the East Coast, 442 over on the West Coast. Uh, we're learning in this developing story this morning that the Biden administration's waiving dozens of federal laws to build a border wall in South Texas. It's the first time the administration's used this type of executive power. Fox News' Gary Baumgarten has more on this. It's a rare move for the Biden administration. The White House waiving 26 federal laws that will allow for border wall construction in South Texas. The Department of Homeland Security announcing on Wednesday that Starr County is seeing a surge of migrants across the border illegally. This fiscal year alone, 245,000 people illegally crossed through the region, according to government data. In a statement, Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas said, quote, there is presently an acute and immediate need to construct physical barriers and roads in the vicinity of the border of the United States.
The president has done more to secure the border and to deal with this issue. All of this comes as illegal entries remain high across the entire southern border. Customs and Border Protection data shows more than 2.8 million migrant encounters occurred this fiscal year. We take a look at what's happening at our southern border. It is an absolute disaster down there. Extending the border wall contradicts President Biden's statements in 2020 when he promised that, quote, not another foot of wall would be built under him. Those on a local level are also struggling to deal with the influx of asylum seekers. New York City's Mayor Eric Adams taking the journey to Latin America this week as he plans to discourage those seeking shelter from coming to New York. Basically, uh, it has given the false promise of what life is like of being a migrant and asylum seeker. Gary Baumgarten, Fox News. No, Eric, it's not a false promise of what life is like being an asylum seeker because these people are not asylum seekers. OK, no. Mm -mm. Here's the deal, you guys. This is not <clears throat> a hard problem to fix, meaning once the decision is made, the implementation of it. But y'all, they don't want to fix it. They don't. So you saw in that clip that 26 federal laws um, that. Biden implemented, he basically had to just be like, okay, my bad. Let's just act like that didn't happen. <laughs> Erase that, right? This puppet stopped construction on a wall that was well on its way to securing the border. Literally, that was like the first thing he did when he got an office and said not another foot of wall would be built. And I'm... I, it still boggles my mind that people heard that and didn't see anything wrong with that. Like, it's like nobody had forethought to be like, well, that's, that's not good. That's bad. Right. But you guys, they don't want this fixed. And I, I am going to keep telling y'all, I'm going to tell y'all this and y'all ain't going to like it, but y'all, they got to replace our aging and crumbling labor force. That's it. Like, it's already a well-known fact. Y'all ain't gonna like this part either, but sometimes we got to do a little introspection to just deal with reality. It is a well-known fact, okay, that my people love y'all. Blacks, like y'all, we don't, we, we don't want to work collectively, culturally. Not all, not all, not all, but there is a cultural problem where the work ethic of many in our community, it is less than desirable. Yes, I said it. Second, this is the standard of truth. And on this show, there are going to be times where I just have to say what needs to be said, and you're not going to like it. But if you are a black American and you own a home, here's the, you know, you know what I'm about to say. You know that you are more likely who are you more likely, should I say, who are you more likely to call to handle your landscaping or any sort of construction project that you might need? Hmm? Hmm? Are, are you more likely to call Tyrone and them? Or are you going to move more toward Jose and Pablo? Like, go ahead, examine your heart, tell the truth, and just deal with what I said, because we got to talk about it. You know, you know what I know. How most of you, you would be more prone to call Jose and Pablo because you already know that if you call Tyrone and them, either they ain't going to show up or when they do show up, they did a half-baked job. Some of the materials that you purchased just went missing. You're like, well, wait a minute. I know I bought more wood than this. And then they demanded more money and couldn't even give you a proper accounting of the work that they did up until that point. So what happened? What happened? You got mad and then you went and called Jose. And, and Jose showed up, him and Pablo, Juan and Consuela. Yes, Consuela, that's Pablo's wife. She was there too. And all of them not only fixed the poor work that Tyrone and them did, but they completed the deck in half the time. So tell me if I'm lying. Tell me, see, nobody wants to have these conversations out loud, but I do. Like, I know we, we got issues. 
No one wants to talk about the reality that is happening right in front of our eyes. I don't know if it just makes you feel better to not say these things out loud, but it's not helping you to ignore the fact that you heard what I said and you like, you know, she right. I mean, I tried to give Tyrone and them a chance. I offered them a six pack and, you know, some neck bones or something, but they just, they, I just, there is a new labor force emerging in this country. And yes, it includes a segment of people who are willing to do whatever they got to do to earn a living and improve the lives of their family. Notice how I said families. Mm hmm. Family. Not single mamas on purpose, but families. And although I vehemently disagree with a person entering this country illegally, I understand why many of them are here. Like they are seeking economic asylum, not political asylum. This is about economics for them. They are fleeing countries where socialism and communism reign and they just want the opportunity to improve their lives so that in one generation, their children won't have to go through what they went through. I get it. Believe me, I get it. But what I don't get is how we, black Americans, how we just sat by and just let it happen, right? Like, so instead of us taking cues from our predecessors who understood that limited government was best, we ran right on over there, giving our votes and loyalty to the Democratic Party in exchange for more government instead of economic independence. Like we were on our way to having economic independence, but no. We bow down and we blindly support everything that furthers our demise and that works toward our detriment. Instead of us realizing that we are not handicapped infants and that more government is not the answer, but rather a firm foundation in God, a solid and firm foundation beginning with the family provides the greatest protection against the threat of starting and remaining at the bottom. Please be clear, this is America. America's a ladder. Yes, a lot of us have to start at the bottom, but there's no one that makes you stay at the bottom. It's a ladder and you climb up those rungs based on your own effort. Why? How do we know it? Because the immigrants come over here and they do it in one generation. They come over here with the suitcase and the jacket on their back and they figure it out. They figure it out. But our women, no, we decided that it was better to get a check from Zaddy government than to stay with our men, raise our children, and achieve a better outcome together. When has struggling apart ever worked out well? It doesn't. So at the end of the day, this gimmick lawsuit that Mayor Adams has concocted, this thing is comical to me. And, and I'm gonna sit, I am going to sit and I'm going to watch what happens because I'm struggling to see what law was broken or what violation occurred that warrants the city of New York to think that damages are owed to them from these charter bus companies who were simply engaging in commerce, right? Like he just looks dumb and desperate at this point because he's running out of money and he knows if he raises taxes, he already going to lose the election. But if he, his reelection, that's not happening. If it does, New York City, all my people that say y'all deserve exactly what you get. He ain't going to, I don't think he's going to be reelected, but if he raises taxes, which New Yorkers are taxed to death, if he definitely does that, y'all going to be way more pissed off than you already are. So now this is his desperate attempt. I got to get some, I got to get some revenue. I got to get some money from somewhere. Who can I blame? Cause you know, accepting responsibility, being humble and being like, you know what? Listen, I'm a write your speech for you, Eric. Th this is what, this could win him the election. If it, and if, listen, y'all here go. I'm a freestylist. This is what Eric could do. New Yorkers are so gracious and forgiving. We, we rough around the edges, but we, you know what I'm saying? If we sense sincerity, we'd be like, all right, I'm going to give you a pass. If Eric Adams just took a stand and said, you know what? I have served as the police chief. I think he was police chief. Or he, I know he comes from a law enforcement background. So he's like, you know, I've, I've served this city um, 
in a law enforcement capacity. And I'm, I'm a son of this city. Like I'm from Brooklyn, son. Like I'm from Brooklyn. Like if he did that, right. And then just said, you know, but when I assumed this position, I really thought that I was going to be able to improve the lives of my constituents. Like this was, you was going to be in a New York state of mind, like all the time. Right. Like we were just going to generate revenue and I was going to get crime down. And like it, this New York was going to be the New York like it was in its glory days. But something happened. I realized that, um, you know, having a sanctuary city status. It's really not in the best interest of New York City residents. I'm a New York City resident, right? I'm from Brooklyn, son, right? <laughs> and so um, I understand that this law was on the books before I got here. And sometimes in leadership, leaders, leaders have to make hard decisions. And although so many immigrants came through Ellis Island all those many years ago, we got to make some changes because what was happening at Ellis Island, that's not what's happening today. There's a, there's a way to come here to just acquire the American dream. I want people to come here to acquire the American dream. But Pouring through our southern border illegally under the guise of you seeking asylum. I can't, I can no longer support that because, because of the state of our southern border, this city can no longer support that. And so by executive order, now I don't, I don't know if he has the power to do this. I think he does, but just flow with me, flow with me. I'm in character y'all flow with me. I got to make an executive decision. And I know when you're a leader, you can't please everybody, but it is in the best interest of the city's life today and in the future if we are no longer a sanctuary city because we full and we can't take any more of this. If he just stood and gave a press conference like, y'all, he would... He would get the slow clap. He would get the slow clap. And people would be like, you know what? He connected with us in a meaningful way. And he told the truth. He didn't worry about politics in terms of, I got to keep Joe Biden happy. I got to keep Kathy happy. I need to keep my people happy. And what's keeping my people happy right now is that I don't cut fire, sanitation, education, and police. I can't keep my people happy if I do those things and I can't slap these people in the face who elected me by shelling out all this money to I'm calling them criminals because when you cross the border illegally, you broke the law. It's a crime. If he just was honest and stood on his square like that, he would have Democrats and Republicans be like, you know what? That's all we can ask for. Like he liberal is all get out, but. That was a common sense decision, and I respect him for that. But he ain't going to do that. But y'all y'all can send this video to him and tell his speechwriters to kind of just tweak it a little bit. They could take out the, you know, I'm from Brooklyn Sun part. They could take that part out because it's really not becoming of a politician to speak that way, even though he still speak like he hang out on Flatbush Ave. But anyway, that's just me. I think... And I am no fan of Eric Adams, believe me. If he just came out and made a heartfelt speech like that and shut this foolishness down, he might get a reelection. He might. He might. But I don't know. What y'all think? <laughs>